The sides of the Storm Enforcer are not swing out, they are slide off, slide to the back, and off they come. The accessory box is shipped mounted inside of the Cooler Master Storm Enforcer. Taking a look inside, screws, standoffs, wire ties, tool free hard drive rails. Rails for mounting a floppy disk drive or any three and a half in the optical disk drive. Positions. Storm guard. This goes into your vertical PCI slot. Allows you to wrap the cords of your peripherals to prevent them walking off during, say, a LAN party or whatnot. Two and a half inch drive adapter to mount into your hard disk drive cage as well as a standoff socket manual. The interior of the Storm Enforcer is very spacious for mid-tower. You've got a very nice size cutout in the back in the motherboard tray for accessing the back of the motherboard for back plates. 120 millimeter fan firing out the rear. Your expansion slots, everything is done in black. Your optical disk drive mountings, very simple. Open, close. Simply slide the optical drive into place with it open. All you need to do is flip the switch, it will lock it right there. Top hard disk drive cage and your bottom hard disk drive cage. Down on the bottom of the enforcer case, you can see there's a small hard disk drive cage for two two and a half inch drives. Typically, you would want to use this. For, a, for an SSD, just out of the fact that it really doesn't get any ventilation whatsoever. Right next to it, opening for your power supply air intake with a removable washable dust filter. Coming from the front of the enforcer case, standard motherboard connectors, hard disk LED, reset switch, power switch, power LED, from up top, USB 3 header, audio, USB 2 header. The top hard disk drive cage of the Storm Enforcer is removable and rotatable. Remove simply, pinch two plastic pieces, comes out, and can be mounted front to rear as well. or can be left out. If you're only using one or two hard drives, you've got two hard drive openings down here. This is going to open up a ton of space for airflow. Also, if you're using a larger video card, I mean, obviously, there's no video card that can possibly take up the amount of room the Cooler Master is going to give you here. Looking at the back of the motherboard tray of the Storm Enforcer, you've got a good amount of room between the motherboard tray and the side panel, so you're going to be able to wrap all your cables without a problem. Once again, nice large opening to the back of the motherboard. Three cutouts for your cabling, as well as a very large cutout down the bottom to bring your cabling from your power supply through to the back of the motherboard. Good room to the back of your hard and optical discs. Very easy to work on, with plenty of places to tie your cables down. Should have no problem doing a nice, neat wiring job with the Storm Enforcer case. Beginning component installation, I've installed an OCZ Fatality power supply in here, which is a standard size power supply. goes right in. You've got, uh, it's a little snug here. If the modular cables were on the bottom, it might be a problem getting uh, around the two and a half inch drive cage, but with the modular cables up top, there's absolutely no problem. Also, the two and a half inch drive cage is removable, so that is another way around it. But all in all, right in, four screws, no problem. Motherboard tray opening is right where it should be. Cabling can go right through. Motherboard installation, pretty standard. Full-size ATX motherboard goes in quite well. Fits nicely. You've got a good amount of room to work around. Uh, it's a little tight up top, but not bad for a mid-tower, that's for sure. You've got very nicely placed openings for your 8-pin 
power cable to the motherboard, as well as the main motherboard power cable. Uh, openings in the motherboard tray allow you to route the wiring right to them. Standard I.O. headers and uh, power switch, power cable, etc. Comes up quite nicely. Fan drops down. Optical drive mounting does actually require removing the nose. There are three clips located inside. It's just to press and the nose. We'll pop off. With the nose off and the door open, simply to press and your vent plate pops right out. With the front plate out, installation simply open your optical disk drive, lock, slide the drive into place, line it up flush, close the lock, and your drive is secure. Video card, we've installed a reference size HD6870. Uh, good amount of room up here. You can go a little bit bigger. And if you need more room, obviously, you've got a ton. The tool-free installation for the hard disk drive, very simple. Two rails go right into the screw holes. No tools. And just slide it right into place. Locks. Take it out, pinch, pull it right out. That also goes for the bottom cage. Same installation procedure, top or bottom. In the end, the cable routing was a little unusual, but uh, it is effective and you wind up with a nice clean build. Fully assembled, the Sturm Enforcer definitely has uh, a nice look to it. The side window is definitely very well thought out. It's kind of an unusual shape, but as you can see, it shows off all the components of the system. You've got your CPU cooler, in this case a V6 GT with red lighting going to match the case. You get a glow from inside. You can see the RAM. You can see the video card, or cards as the case may be, and the power supply is clearly visible. The front fan has a nice red glow as well. Of course, looks are totally subjective, but all in all, I think it's a very good looking package. Uh, the Enforcer goes together very well and definitely looks the part as a gaming case.